ओम सदा शिव समारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरु परंपरा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम ओं सहना सहनो हुनक् सह वीर करवाहि तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु विद्युषा वह ई ओं शाति 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 See the verse number one. I hope all of you have text. If not already, I sent you also in the chat. You can download. Shri Hari Paramanandam, Upadeshtaram Ishwaram, Vyapakam Sarvalokanam, Karanam Tam Namamiham. we are seeing the text called aparukshanubhuti so what does it mean anubhuti means generally translated as experience and here we have translated anubhuti means gyanam knowledge why and how we will be seeing in details later on that means anubhuti knowledge of what so we say anubhuti of aparoksha so it is called 60 60 p sasti tatpurusha samasa that means knowledge of aparoksha so what does the aparoksha mean so aparoksha brahma so the brahman that is called aparoksha so what would be the translation of this text called aparoksha anubhuti the knowledge of brahman which is aparoksha means which is neither pratyaksha it is not direct knowledge nor aparoksha it is not indirect either but it is aparoksha because it is sakshi pratyaksha we have discussed in the last class so the right translation of this text would be knowledge of or you can use the word direct knowledge of brahman is called aparokshanu bhuti so don't use the word experience then that will be big problem later on you will come across that's why this is the difference between vedanta and neo vedanta i ask some people so what is this aparoksha anubhuti means somebody says self realization sometimes says to know who am i <laughs> that's why i thought of you know starting from the beginning or else after studying uh, listening to ramayana for 9 years or 9 days or 20 years you ask whether rama is a devil or ravan is a devil okay <laughs> coming back we have a this cultural and traditional practice before starting anything we do a prayer like every day we do this sahana bhavatu with shanti mantra this is what our tradition and always we start with guru and ishwara because to achieve success we need daiva anugraha without daiva anugraha means the ishwara's grace very difficult to achieve success why we need ishwara anugraha because me as an individual always in between my prarabdha karma my previous life karma result of previous life 
and my agami karma the karma that i am doing with my free will today so always i am caught in between so when my praradha karma is stronger i don't have any choice that i will start bending towards the circumstances situation is it clear whenever you are carried away with reference to your situation surrounding and you don't have buddhi to do something that means you are not using your free will properly then you are forced to be governed by the surrounding so when you are forced to be governed by surrounding it means your prarabdha is stronger than your purushartha than your free will this is the first point second point we do not know because prarabdha is prarabdha so why i say prarabdha is prarabdham because prarabdha is adrushtham it is unseen that's why it is called prarabdham if you know can you call as prarabdham that's why in colloquially in india everybody would say oh this is my prarabdham they will keep the hand on the head <laughs> okay you know on the forehead oh this is my prarabdham <laughs> so this is the expression we have in india all languages so what does it mean that prarabdham being adrushtham being on sin i cannot control i don't have any say over my prarabdham but i have some saying over my purushartha that's why what we do to bring down the impact of prarabdham we use free will in the form of prayer so when we use the free will in the form of prayer now agami karma becomes stronger so when this agami karma becomes stronger now the prarabdha has to go down in the sense the impact of prarabdha will not affect me and this agami karma in the form of prayer nullifies neutralizes especially bad prarabdha that's why if you observe <coughs> every day when you do sandhya mandanam or you do any ritual what you do or a simple puja mamo pata samasta duritakshya dwara so what is that upata durita okay what does it mean that is nothing but my bad prarabdha to be taken care because when bad prarabdha which fructifies in the form of papa they actually creates obstacle in my life make a note very careful if you look at your life that is full of obstacles it means that your prarabdha that happens to be bad is getting fructified more and more so that's why when we do prayer when we do sandhya mandanam this is the daily rituals to be done through that what happens first thing i learned to address my prarabdha that to bad prarabdha because if it's a good pra- prarabdha i don't have any problem okay imagine if everything is good in your life will you come to vedanta class <laughs> nobody comes to vedanta okay <laughs> remember only when some problem happens then only you come to vedanta okay <laughs> anyway let us not get into too much so here adi shankaracharya being a jeeva being an individual when he is starting a new work also he does the prayer why imagine those days writing the text that to on palm leaves you preserve not like computer okay cloud and all these things then finally one goat come 
and its <laughs> chapter is over suppose you manage somehow from good and you know this white ant this that they will destroy suppose you manage from them you store you know and you know nalanda vishwavidyalaya how they destroyed bond khilji another muslim fellow bond libraries that's why the manuscript most of them that is available in germany not available in india because it was learning this the, the story goes the vedic manuscript that were burnt by buddhist buddhism buddhist people that fire was running uh, months together what sort of destruction we have gone through however let us not get into complication so that means when adi shankaracharya writes so he expects let this text reach to the right people not not only in order to complete the text properly also to hand over to the right people that is also duty so keeping that in mind he does the prayer and this prayer is something very amazing prayer first of all he says aham namami ishwaram i am taking from here okay based on the sanskrit aham me or i i offer my salutation prostration to whom tam to him and who is him who is that person who is he he is none other than ishwaram so don't look at ishwara means say in tamil people okay shiva okay because this is another problem so the moment ishwara word comes in tamil nadu they will say okay shivam you know it's not that ishwaram because when it talks about ishwaram also we need to see maya sahita chaitanya all technical word because this text i'll go through lot of technical points so you have to be very careful so the ishwaram the god that is being talked here as maya sahita chaitanya the consciousness with the attribute called maya hold on we'll be seeing we have seen again we'll be also seeing this so that means i am talking about the ishwara that is the cause of universe that you also will be talking later on and not only that ishwaram also what sort of ishwaram i need to do you know relate with that ishwara and he says don't worry for that he uses another word that ishwaram is not other than shri harim so that means first he presents that my salutation my prostrations to him the lord so who is ishwaram so who is the creator of this universe or you can say that who is arupa ishwara or you can use the word viswarupa ishwara all the terminology we have used very carefully earlier but i am not comfortable that's why arjuna was not comfortable seeing viswarupa so i need to relate with my ishta devata so here he brings adi shankaracharya himself brings his ishta devata so what is his ishta devata adi shankaracharya's ishta devata was vishnu this is a very nice point to say okay because why in his commentaries these are the technical points i need to bring more and more in his commentaries whenever he finds a chance about ishwara so he will say sali grame never he says shivalinge never <laughs> so that means it's very clear and here also this point is such shri hari so who is hari general translation would be 
Hari means Lord Vishnu. We try to present differently. We say Harati iti papani. The one who removes obstacles. That means especially my difficulties. Especially bad prarabdham. So the one who removes bad prarabdham. That's why in India we have very popular concept. If you are going through tough time, difficulties, do Vishnu Sahasranama Parayanam because of this. So that takes care of. So here he says, Harim. So Harati Papani Iti. So the one who destroys the papas. And later on we say that is not enough. If we say only Papani, we say Agyanam Cha. The one who destroys the ignorance. Because as you see in the beginning all your obstacles just appears to be obstacle because of ignorance. Once you have knowledge, is there any obstacle? They are just stepping stones. So the problem that you think is a problem becomes a difficulty or becomes a stepping stone if you have knowledge. That's why here is being said, my salutations to Harim. And who is that Hari? Sri Sameta Harim. Maya Sameta Harim. Not only Vishnu, okay? That's why, thank God, in Hinduism, all the gods are married, okay? So they don't have any problem. <laughs> so, Maya Sameta. Sri Sameta. That's why, not only, do you know, I also prostrate the Vishnu who is along with Lakshmi, because I need Lakshmi, okay? And basically, most of the people, when they are either Arti or Artharthi, Jigyasu, God knows, okay? <laughs> so what choice we have? Better to take care of Sri. That's why somebody said, very nicely, Swamiji, can you give some mantra so that all my problem will be taken care? I said, I have two options for you. There is a mantra, through that all your problem will be taken care of. Another option, that I will give a mantra, through that lot of money will come. Now choose which mantra you want. <laughs> tell, tell me what way. <laughs> Swamiji, once money comes, all problem goes. <laughs> give the mantra. <laughs> through that money comes, the fellow doesn't understand, hey, money only brings problem, okay? <laughs> However, let us not get into that too much. Then he says beautifully, and which is that Ishwaraha, the Sri Harim, the next language he uses what? That Sri Harim is Paramanandam. Because the Anandam, the happiness, generally people arrive at it is limited any experience best anandam is limited remember this anything that we experience it has to be limited but here ishwaraha not to be experienced if it is experienced Ishwaraha, it is not Paramanandam, it is what? Limited Anandam. Simanandam, not Asimanandam. So that's why we said, no, the Swami's name is called Asimananda, not Asimananda, okay? <laughs> Cannot be accepted, okay? <laughs> 
So that means the anandam, the happiness Ishwara is Paramanandam. That's why you should not work to experience Ishwara, God. Oh, I am doing a lot of practice to experience God. Please. That means you do not know what you are talking. Technically, you cannot experience God. If you experience God, maybe you are Ishta Devata. That's a different thing altogether. Arupa Ishwara. That means you don't have Ishwara concept either. So Paramanandam means that that is limitless happiness. That means I need to have knowledge of Ishwara, not ish experiencing Ishwara. And also says, how is it that? Why you say it is Paramanandam? It means limitless cannot be experienced. He says, because it is Vyapakamithya. So backpacker means that which pervades everywhere, everything. So all pervading one, backpacker iti. So that which pervades, then what does it pervade? He says, look, he will be also putting very nicely, sarval lokanam karanam iti. Not only it is backpacker, it is the cause of all lokas. It is not the Vishnu that who is portrayed lying down in Kshiravdhishagaram, in milk ocean. We are not talking about that Vishnu, okay? Because if we are talking about that Vishnu, that Vishnu loka is created or not? But here he says, we are talking about that Vishnu, who is the cause of Vishnu Loka also. Sarva Loka, Lokana, entire Loka, starting from Brahmadi Stavarant, Stavara, Stavara Paryantam, beginning with Brahma Loka to a stone. We will be seeing in the next verse. So Sarva Lokanam Karanam Iti. So that means being Karanam, being the cause the, of the entire universe. That's why we use the word Satchara Chara Jagatam. Movable and immovable, both put together. Vyakta and Avyakta, that's the most important point. Vyakta means that which is manifested and Avyakta means not yet manifested. So put both the things together, the cause of both. So to express that, he puts sarva lokanam karanam iti. And not only that, also he is called upadeshtaram. That is the most important word for us. Why he uses this word upadeshtaram? Because this is the responsibility of a teacher to remember the teacher and teaching tradition. Or else, will create a nuisance. And here when he says Upadeshtaram, we can take this in two ways. So Upadeshtaram means the one who gives Upadesham, the one who teaches. Teacher Itartha. But this teacher we can take in two ways. So he is trying to say, number one, that which commonly said, that Lord Vishnu is the first teacher. Narayanam Padma Bhuvam Basistam Tatputram Chaparasaram. We have, you know, chanting. Sometimes we do Sadasiva Samaramham or else Narayana Padma Bhuvam Basistam Tatputra Chaparasaram. We have lineage. Both are one and same. So there we say the first teacher is Vishnu. So I remember the teaching, tradition and the source of teaching. This is one of the popular meaning. Other one is also equally important. So Adi Shankaracharya highlights that my guru is in the form of Vishnu the Ishwara. 
So my immediate guru, so this Govinda Bhagavat Pada is, because his name also Govinda, now he is also in the form of Lord Vishnu. Because that's why, isn't <coughs> There is no division, Guru Devata. And in this concept also, this is being accepted. And with this, this verse called Mangalacharam, you can say prayer verse completes. So in short, prayer is most important thing in our life to make sure that the prarabdha does not pull me away along with force, its force. If it starts pulling me or if I am getting carried away with reference to my surroundings, that means somewhere I am lacking in prayer. Continuing. <clears throat> the next verse is very nicely. Let us chant. Aparokshanu bhotir vai Prochyate moksha siddhaye Sadvireva prayatnena Bikshaniya mohor moho So this verse called, we call as Pratigya, promise of the author. Because in those days we had lot of things. You cannot write a book just like that. <laughs> nowadays, you know, you can write the way you want. And of course, nowadays you don't have to write. So there are third agency, okay? <laughs> you give idea, they publish book with their ISBN and everything. So you become an author. You become an author, okay? They advertise everywhere <coughs> in the social media. So writing a book nowadays is not a problem at all. And the best part, especially after this AI came in, you don't have to do anything, okay? <laughs> so you can ask that fellow, I want to write a book in 130 pages or 20 pages or 500 pages on, tell me what is the hot topic that fellow will suggest you. How many chapters should come, it can suggest. And each chapter can be 20, 20 pages, what are the things to write, that fellow will write. And present it in your name, don't worry. <laughs> And full of, free of copyright, okay? There is no copyright problem either. <laughs> what a beautiful life, okay? <laughs> anyway, those days it was not like that. Because when you write a book, you have to be very careful that you should waste your time, nothing wrong in it. But you don't have right to waste others' time because whoever reads, they will waste their time or not. There should be a purpose. That's why you have to write the purpose of your book. Why you are writing. In fact, many places they write, like, you no, know, for my Chitta Suddhyartham, or to make sure that my understanding is clear. To see my understanding, I am writing. That is acceptable. Not simply to prove that I am an author. <laughs> you understand? Present day maximum of the book is what? It's like that. You know, one joke I can say with this, uh, I'll stop it. So, <clears throat> there is a book, okay? It's very famous because I can give you two, three books name, okay? One uh, bestseller book, also called bestseller, okay? Book name I don't want to say, doesn't look nice. And of course, the Indian fellow. So, he wrote a book and went to uh, the, um, this, you know, publisher. The publisher rejected. This book has no value. Cannot be published. Okay. Then again, he got hold of, after, you know, few months, got hold of some uh, people, those who are in editorial board. Again, it was rejected. 
then went to the chief editor after some few months it was rejected and finally it went to the owner and owner also rejected no it's not acceptable then finally he managed this is the truth okay he managed to catch hold of both auditor of the company commercialist <laughs> and <a> lawyer <laughs> and they put the pressure after seven times exact information i am giving you after seven time then the publisher got so angry asked the editorial board somehow you publish this book i can't handle any more and this publishers or the editorial board they do you know put the title if i tell the title you will get shocked okay i don't want to tell okay you starts with your you another two words okay you can guess now <laughs> and they changed because this fellow could do it that's why they make the book name that way and that book became best seller this is not one incident i can give you many more incident okay many best seller books and you know one of the best seller in west one novel okay that is called spiritual book i call as a novel so in short before writing a book one has to justify why the person is writing and here he says this aparokshanu bhuti book what is the purpose so the purpose is here moksha siddhaye we'll be seeing in details moksha siddha means in order to accomplish the moksha we need aparoksha anubhuti and prachyate it is being talked by teaching tradition it is not by me so that means this aparoksha anubhuti because if it is experiencing will help you to get moksha that is not going to work that's why aparoksha anubhuti why indeed means the direct knowledge of brahman is indeed for the accomplishment of moksha there is no other means for moksha please understand that there are many paths it doesn't work yes paths are most important thing they become indirect means they become preparatory stages but the means is aparoksha anubhuti that's why those who believe in this different paths they translate as experience because so that it becomes easier for them to manipulate i out of ignorance or arrogance so that's why here we say aparoksha anubhuti means the direct knowledge of brahman is indeed for the accomplishment of moksha so that means moksha is nothing but the direct knowledge of brahman this is to be understood that's why the next line it talks and based on that how the priority you fix how you move in your life and how you get complicate your life that will be seen in keeping with the second line tomorrow please om om punnamada punnamidam purnat punnamutachyate purnasya punnamadaya punnameva vashishyate 
ओम शांति शांति शांति